All right, so five two four is due today. Five two five is due tomorrow. So five two three, we took questions on last week, but I will go back to it if you need. But I think we talked about most of it. So in five two four, and your table doesn't have to have the same abbreviations, especially because I think here we're talking like chocolate versus coconut. I forget what. I gotta grab that binder. But so however you abbreviate it, yours might not be exactly the same. But if it asks you to make a table, I'm looking for you to make a table. If it asks you to make a tree diagram, I'm looking for you to make a tree diagram. Right? Whatever we ask you to do, we're actually asking you to do that. Reminder, double check that your 524 says CC2 at the top. Double check that your 524 says CC2 at the top. John? On B or D? The diamond problem? So what we're thinking through in these diamond problems is when they give us the bottom and the top, is that two numbers add up to make 31, multiply to make 234. So my technique for solving these diamond problems is to think about the factors of 234. And you have to figure out whether you're gonna have one positive, one negative, or both the same. Here they're both going to be positive, right? Because we multiply to make a positive, we add to make a positive. So I need to think of two positive numbers that add up to make 31, but multiply to make 234. If I think in the middle-ish first, I don't know, like 13, 14, 15, something like that. So I grab my calculator and start playing with what are factors of 234 that are kind of close to each other, at least to start. So like if I do 13, I can get 13 and 18. And that hits it the first time. But if I try to do 234 divided by 14, it's a decimal. 234 divided by 15, it's a decimal. Right, so this is just where they're close to each other, and then I can check the addition. Oh, it works, they're 31. Does that make sense? So when we know what they multiply to make, it's nice to think about the two pieces. Kylie? Okay. Uh, Lucas? Yeah. Yeah, and then that was close. questions. I would expect there to probably be some. Oh, I need to unlock my screen. Mia, sorry, I saw that half hand there. So, when I go to these sports events and they're giving away free stuff, I would really like to be one of the people that gets the free stuff. Even though my wife would say we've got plenty of free things filling up our basement. So, the answer they gave you is 1 8 when reduced. Really, 5 over 40 is the answer that makes sense to me. And then we. Well, so hang on. The question is do we care about the 50,000 depending on the question? So. Yada, 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 information, information. The total amount of people is 50,000. The stadium is divided into 40 sections. And they're going to give free hats to five of them, right? They'll be like section seven, section 25, and section 32. You all get free hats. Like, they'll just pick five random sections, right? So if we say the probability of getting a hat 
Well, I'd have to be in one of those sections, so to win that thing, my part there, right, works the same way as percent, kind of like with part divided by whole. My part is the five sections that will win over the entire stadium is 40. We don't need to use that 50,000 for part A. It does not matter how many people, it's talking about how many sections. Does that make sense? Yeah, so, then if they asked us how many people might win hats, then we would do this times the amount of people. But they're not asking how many people. Other questions. The lemonade problem is sometimes tricky for kids, so I've tried to write it so that it makes sense. Like I tried to change how it was typed and how it asks you questions. But if that doesn't make sense, please ask about it. I should scoot back so you can see the question number. So 60, 61. Lucas, what's up? Yeah, the lemonade question. So two cups of lemon juice for every four cups of water. As I start drawing this picture then, so I'd have two of lemon, four of water, six total. Right, because when I put two plus four, I get six total. So, really, this section, when I start thinking in percents, is two out of six. The trap door is kids will think two out of four, but four is not your total. Right, but B asks us ratio of lemon juice to total lemonade. So, lemon juice, I had two cups to total lemonade is six. Or remember, we can stack it 2 over 6, or we can reduce it 1 over 3. And that's how they get 33%, right? It'd be 33.3 repeating, but if I try to make it a little bit nicer, 33% is lemon juice. If Angel made 10 cups of lemonade and used 3 cups of lemon juice in her mixture, did she follow this same recipe? So what we're asking is if Angel's recipe is 3 out of 10, and this recipe up here called for, let's write it in a different color, at least for now, 1 out of 3, because we just talked about our 1 out of 3, are these equal? No. 3 tenths is not equal to 1 third, so they are not the same recipe. Does that make sense? Other questions. The spinner one here was all about finding a common denominator. Guys, I'm looking for work on that problem. Lucas? Uh, is that what they did too? 63, yep. 36 works. I don't think 18 works till the very end when you can reduce it because 18 does not work with the one fourth. So yeah, 36. If you have not done this problem yet, you might jot yourself down a note that doing a denominator of 36 for each of them is going to be the way to go. Oh, yeah. So if it's all right, every time you get the denominator of 12, nice. Like, like all right, so if you need more help on 524, you are formally invited to come to math lunch. That or AO or extensions, right? All of those times that we have to get help. But now I need you to get your notes out from last week. If you're done with 524 and it's ready to turn in, turn it in right now. If you're done with 524 and you're ready to turn it in, turn it in. If we make it far enough at the end of the class, I'm betting with you guys. Ooh. They are, but they spit out way late. I wonder if the thing ran out of paper. Or I, I grabbed them on accident. Oh, you're good. Thank you very much. 
Yeah, but it's not due till tomorrow, so I'd rather wait. Just based on time, I'd rather do some lessons. So, if you want to keep it out, it might help you because it has... <clears throat> Guys, I was talking with one of the students that I tutor, and I was comparing like my notes with the notes their teacher gives them. All of this top part on 525, all of this is just to help you out. So a reminder about probability tables, how we can make it when there are two events. If we turned that into a tree, what it would look like. And this is all what we're doing today. So you might want to keep this out to give you a reminder. But the main thing that I need for you to have out right now is the graph paper that looks like this. Can anyone remind us what was going on here and why a table doesn't work? Anyone not John? I'm going to have to start paying him soon. Antonella, what were we doing here and why doesn't a table work? What do you mean? Tell me more. How many times are we going to do this? Not just that it's an odd number. You're right. But how many times? What was the table good for? Like how many times in the table? And actually, we can look back to here. We look here and here. How many choices can we do with a, uh, with a table? Sorry. John, you want to jump in? How many choices can we do on a table? Well, this is total events that happen, but how many different like picks? Or here it's a spinner. So guys, here's a reminder for you. And if you have out your 525, which you should have, unless you already put it away, we can only do two things in a table. We have a choice going across the top. And we have a choice going down the side. We are only allowed to do two different things in a table. We're using a tree. And it, guys, if we don't have this written down, this is what we're going to write down first. right? We're using a tree because we're going to pick three times. So we're going to pick three times. And every time we're going to put it back in. Yeah, they're independent because it resets the probability. We put it back in. So finish this out. This is pick one, right, when we went to red, green, blue. I don't think we had time on Friday to finish this out. This was picks two. There was a lot more to write here, red, green, blue, red, green, blue, red, green, blue. And then picks three, but mine got a little goofed up down here. is when things get a little crowded here right I don't even have space to fit all the stuff I'm trying to and I'm gonna throw a few of these on but then I'm gonna squeeze in what I need to I'm cheating guys if you're already done with this you must be writing a lot faster than me there are three options beneath each of the options that we just had. So 
to fit all of them in, this is one of the only drawbacks to a probability tree, which is smaller, a table or a tree? A table, right? It'd be smaller. But can a table do for three picks? No, that's why we had to use the tree here. Talk with your team. What's the chance of getting all three reds? You can find it up here. Try to find where all three reds. You've got a red on pick one, red on pick two, red on pick three. What's that probability? Take like a minute to chat with each other about that. All three reds. If you don't have a highlighter, get one. Nice, but those aren't highlighters. Right? We want to be able to highlight stuff we already wrote down. Go down your tree, follow your roots, and highlight our red. Red left and red. So you should be following one path down your tree. Red the first time, red the second time, that was being goofy, and red the third time. How many paths have red, 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 like red on every level. How many paths can we do that with? One. So there's only one path here. So we're going to write out probability of all red. What was being goofy? I think I know what I need to do. One out of. Sorry, guys. I'm trying to reset my smart board. Three. I'm about to pick on you just because I can't find my cards at the moment. John, I know you're joking about one out of three. At least I'm guessing you're joking. Are you joking? You're not joking? Well, I guess I should probably use cards then. Thirteen. I, I think we just said there's only one option that's red, red, red. Eli, want to help us out? How many total results are there possible here? Of the whole thing. So this is how I know I'm not asking the question correctly. I want everyone to look down here. At the end, that is how many possible outcomes there are. Because each of those paths is unique. Right? Red, red, red. There's no other red, red, red. Right? And if I look right, and I'm going to go real bright. If I go, uh, let's go green, 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 I guess. Green, green, green only has one path to get to it. This green down here is not green, green, green. It's green, red, green. This green down here is green, blue, green. All of these are different things. So we actually have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27 total options across the final layer here. And I didn't draw this very well because these kind of go up and down. But the bottom layer, the 
bottom level tells you your final denominator. But here's the trick. That, and I want you to write it like this, please. That's just 1 over 3 times 3 times 3. In choice 1, we had 4 options. Choice 2, we, or sorry, I'm thinking about the next problem. In layer one, we had three options. Layer one, choice one, we had three options. Layer two, we had three options. Layer three, we had three options. So we do three times three times three. I think this will make more sense if we practice another one. So, now I'm gonna tell you, your tree doesn't have to go down. It can go left to right. So when we go to do this problem, your tree can start on the left. Guys, you might want to get a new sheet of paper. Your tree can start on the left and branch out like this if you want. Some people like their trees better like that. Up to you. Anyone want to read? Anyone feeling like reading this morning? All right, John. So, our task here is to help Scott figure out how many new flavors can we make if we have been given vanilla and chocolate ice cream to work with, hazelnut sprinkles and toffee bits to mix in, and then apricot, plum, berry, and grape to swirl in. Now, here's our rules, though. We have to use each of these things. There's no like skipping one of them because those things already exist, right? We're trying to make new stuff and we can only use one from each layer. So I can't say chocolate, hazelnuts, and sprinkles. I can't use two of these. I can say chocolates, hazelnuts, apricot, right? But I have to use one of these. We're going to start with the ice cream flavor, then go to the mix-in and then go to fruit swirl at the end. We're going to build a tree diagram to represent this. So work with your team. The first thing you're going to do is split for the ice cream flavor, right? So the first thing we're going to do is you split and probably label it what? For vanilla and chocolate, what might you use? V and C. You might as well use V and C. So that's how your tree diagram is going to start. What do you mean backwards? I just went left to right instead of top down. You can go top down or you can go left to right. Like I just said, it doesn't matter if you go top down or left to right. It makes more sense calling it a tree diagram if you go top down. So you can go left to right. You can turn your roots on the side. Work with your team to figure out how many total new flavors. And you might want to leave space between stuff, right? You might want to leave stuff spread out. You guys, you might want to scooch down on your paper. If you're working left to right, you might want to scooch down and all the way down. Your tree looks like it's using it like it's flying up the tree. Just for a second. Though. It does not matter if you think it would be gross. It does not matter if you think it would be gross. Something about chocolate and grapes to me does not sound good. But it might sound good to somebody else. So you might want to use vanilla and chocolate and all you do is like push up top. So then what shape do you make after vanilla and chocolate? Yeah, the three possible mix ins hazelnut, sprinkles, and toffee bits.
Yeah, there's, yes, multiverse comes around. So, your tree diagram, if you're going left to right, should look something like this. Now, notice this is only half of it. And actually, this is not even half of it. But the first choice, and I'm getting all weird back there with Katie to talk about the multiverse theory. The first choice you make, and if you know about multiverse, it's like every choice you make, you're peeling off into. There's a different universe where you made the other choice, right? It's not that it actually exists, but thought experiment type thing. This is very Mr. Estes type conversation. So in the universe where I made the choice vanilla, then I have to choose hazelnuts, sprinkles, or toffee. But I still need to think about this, right? I still need to fill this in. So on your paper, you need to fill in the chocolate choices too. But then up here, what I'm following is if I chose vanilla and now I choose some toffee bits, and then the choice I have to make is what fruit mix in, and they do peach, I think was seen, plum. Not even sure what plums taste like. You want to have all of this filled in. And I'm kind of looking for volunteers of who thinks theirs is awesome and would like to share it with the class. choice so we are all practicing learning how to do this but this will help your brain Aiden said I go to the ice cream shop I make my first choice vanilla or chocolate and these he can look straight across his paper at the first choice he made then beneath both of those straight across with each other whether he had chosen vanilla he could do toffee, hazelnut, or sprinkles. And if he had chosen chocolate, he could do sprinkles, hazelnut, or toffee. Straight across with each other. Then, regardless of what of these he chose, he can do apricot, plum, whatever, whatever, the weird fruits that they're mixing in. And for each of these, this is why this is easier. I'm not saying what anyone did was wrong because as I walked around, everyone's got good stuff on their paper. But Aiden's is a bit cleaner because I can look right at the bottom row and just count how many ice cream possibilities are there. So try to count on your paper in this final layer how many possible options are here. It's a lot. Yeah, and some people have already started shouting it out. It is a lot. It is 24. So we're going to practice making that look cleaner so that we can kind of more easily count that 24. I was on the fence of giving this to you or not, but making it on our own is part of the skill. So here, glance right up here. This is doing left to right, since we had a really good example with Aiden's top down. This is going left to right, that if I label out here, it's gonna be APBG, 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 
APBG, APBG, APBG, all of these branches. So as I walked around with you guys, I, I was trying to give some of you notes. Chocolate then branches off, right? You want multiple lines branching off of the choice. We don't draw one line and then branch that. We branch right from that choice. So at these intersections, it should say hazelnut sprinkles toffee bits, right? This is just giving an example of how we can build a tree and fill it in. Questions on the tree here for the ice cream. Scott has made 24 new ice cream flavors. It's a lot, right? 24. All right, so now we're going to back it up because it's good to flip-flop these things. I want us to practice because I think you guys might like tables better. Who, who feels like they like tables better than trees? Yeah, the trees are a little hard to draw and keep track of. This is going to relate to a game where I'm going to bet with you guys. And I don't know if I'll bet candy or, you know, just bet, quote-unquote, where we don't actually bet anything. But if I put this spinner in front of you and I say we're going to spin it twice, can I model this with a table if I'm going to spin the spinner twice and add up the result? Yes, because tables are used for two things. So on your graph paper, and as some of you already showed, you might need to run up and grab another piece. We've got like 12 minutes left, so we got a little while, guys. On your graph paper, let's make a table. It doesn't have to be huge, but it can be as big as you want it to be. How many options do we have on this spinner? Five. So we're going to make a table that has five options across the top, five options across the bottom. Or, sorry, the left side. If you want to think kind of like Aiden, you could count and make it nice and clean. So, one, two, three, one, two, three. I think I'm going to do that. Try to take a page from Aiden's book. I like how clean his stuff looks. So I just counted to make these nice and even. Guys, anytime you're drawing, a straight edge can make things look better. So it doesn't need to be a ruler. It's just anything straight. I used to use them like my student ID. What? Because I had it in my binder. Guys, certain things haven't changed that much since when we were in school like using binders. Guys, let's make our life easier and make our numbers go in order. Now, if you already started putting your numbers on your table, that's fine. But I'm going to go from negative to positive. So we had negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 3. So when I go to make this table, I'm going to go negative 2, negative 1, 0, positive one and three. And then down the left side, I'm gonna go in the same order. Negative two, negative one, zero, one, and three. In the table, you wanna fill in the sums. What is the sum? Addition. Here comes the sum. Do, 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 do. And I said, just add the numbers together and see what they. No. I should rewrite the Beatles to be mathy. And then I want you to figure out. What's the probability of a positive sum? And what's the probability of a negative sum? As I walk around and check our tables, make sure that we're doing this all right. So we got to do some addition. Uh-oh. Check with your team. It looks all right to me, but check with them. probably made you feel like this table needed to look really nice. It doesn't. I just use the ruler just because. I mean, 
In our table, if you want to double check your sums, you should have been doing this with your team. Guys, I, so I'm really torn. I think I need to do a seating chart for the afternoon class, but you guys have all kind of like grouped up in a way that I think works well. Like I think most of your groups work well together. So unless I see some people like off task or whatever, I'm probably just gonna leave this class alone and like not redo the seating chart. Unless, if somebody would like me to do that, see me privately, right? If there's like a reason that you would like me to change seats around, if you've kind of gotten stuck with people or whatever. Um, but you should be talking with your group, right? Your team is your team. So I don't want to necessarily break that up. Um, negative two. Be careful, there is a jump, right? A few of us realize there is a jump because we skipped from one to three. So there is going to be a jump here. Right, we jump over, well, it depends on what number, but here in the top row, we jump over zero. Inter careful, this table is kind of goofy then. sort of broke the behavior of my table. What doesn't work? Oh, yep, my brain just totally farted for a second. Sorry, I see three and three, and my brain like wants to multiply them. This is six, my B. My bad. This is six. Yeah, uh, Mia, see me after class, you get candy. What, guys, did I not? Last week I was on a roll of mistakes. I'm just, it's that point in the year where our brains are kind of half fried and we need your help. All right, we got just a couple minutes left to chat about these things. I keep losing my cards. Vanessa, if I look at the table and I want to count up how many positive numbers are there, have you gone ahead and done that yet? Totally fine. With your groups, because I know we just filled this in. Figure out how many positives are there, how many negatives. We might as well say what's the probability of zero since zero is on there. What's the probability of positive? What's the probability of negative? What's the probability of zero? I'll give you a couple minutes, then I'll pull the random cards back out. Yo. Yep. Vanessa's like, I didn't need very long. All right, how many positives are there? You said how many positives? I might have done some math wrong, but I, I see 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Did I, guys, is something on my table wrong? Seriously, seriously asking, is something on my table wrong? Yeah. 
So let's double check it. Three and two makes one. This would be two, three, four, six. I think all those check out to be positive. Zero is not positive, right? We do not count zero. That would be one and two and four. One and three, I think those check out. Two, positive one. I think that's it, guys. Double check that you have these zeros in the middle of your table. There are some zeros that kind of snuck through there, but I think this is 12. So probability of being positive is 12 out of 25. Ooh, we haven't done a 25 this time. Ooh, 25 is nice. Why is 25 nice? It becomes 100 times 4, so that's like 48%. Probability of negative, count up those. I wonder if it's the same as positive. Uh, how many negatives do we have? 10. So that's just 10. What's our denominator there? Oh, yeah, it's the same thing. Same table, same denominator. So if we want to talk in getting to percents, we can get it over 100. What about our probability of zero? Three out of 25, which becomes what? Ooh, careful. We're doing times four, not times 10. Don't fall into the trap. Times four is 12. So if you got to pick, which would you want to pick? Positive, negative, or zero? Positive. If, if you want your thing to happen to win, right? If you want your thing to happen to win. Now, I think John might be rigging the game for somebody else. He's going to give you zero that you win on a zero. You get positive and negative? That's not fair. All right, we'll pick this up here Wednesday. You have a mini mastery tomorrow. I'm debating if you'll be able to work together or not, because I won't be here. So somebody asked me last week, TBD. I don't know if I'll say yes or not. I'm a little torn. I kind of need to know if they know what they're doing. It's, yeah, it's hard on the group mastery. I don't care if you guys work together in your room or whatever. But, uh, I mean, if there's anyone concerning that I need to work with, obviously let me know. But I like, I want to say yes to the fact of still encouraging you to work with each other, but it doesn't give me as good a data. So I think I do a little individual at first and then like team corrections or something like that. I like that idea. Yeah, I feel behind and I'm like not 